Good afternoon, boys and girls, and welcome to episode 65 of Love at First Scent with me, Persilase, coming to you today, as is usual at the moment, from YouTube. Uh, let's get some stuff out of the way very, very quickly. Please consider subscribing to my channel if you haven't already done so. Please give me hearts, thumbs up, wherever you're watching, on YouTube or on Facebook. Please, um, most importantly, feel free to uh, leave a comment or ask a question uh, whenever you like, whether you're watching live or after the live broadcast. Uh, and also don't forget that the perfume we're going to smell today, there will be a blotter update of it um, a few hours after the original broadcast. And Q George says, what a treat for us, uh, three live streams in a row. It's, it's actually a treat for me as well to be able to do it. Um, and I am doing it purely because today I just happen to be able to, and I know um, that I'm not going to be able to for a while. So actually what I'm hoping to do, fingers crossed, is is, is, is go for a fourth one, but let's see how this one goes. Because there, there are quite a few things that I would like to be able to bring to your attention. This will mean nothing if you are not watching the live broadcast. But what we're referring to is that I started today's sessions with a review of uh, Diptyque's Eau Capital, and we've also just done a video of the brand new Hermès uh, flanker, uh, L'Ombre de Merveille. Um, so you, you should be able to, to, to search for those uh, by, by searching on my YouTube channel. And also, if you go to the um, Love at First Scent 2020 playlist, you will be able to find everything that I have reviewed on Love at First Scent so far in 2020. Uh, make sure I don't miss comments. Uh, Ashfaq says, Low was released in Asia last summer, if I remember correctly. What, this one? Really? I didn't know. It's new to the UK. So this is the subject of today's review. Did you did you smell it? Oh no, sorry, that wasn't Ashfaq saying that. It's Aperol Spritz. This is new from. Uh, uh, I'm, I'm gonna. I'm just gonna make life easier for myself and say Francis Kirk Gian, or I may even say Captain Kirk, which is my my very very sincerely fond way of referring to him because I can't actually say Francis Curgian in in a way that won't make half of France just cringe in pain and embarrassment. So let's just say. Let's just say Captain Kirk. Uh, but this is, of course, his eponymous band, brand, Maison Francis Curgion, uh, which he started quite a few years ago now. And a couple of years ago, I think, he did a really, really beautiful rose perfume called A La Rose. Uh, and the reason why I liked it was because it just seemed to work as a journey through rose, a journey through different types of roses. Um, actually, we should just pause a little bit longer because this finding thumbnails thing is... You'd think it would be easy to just find one image, but almost all of the images that I sort of pause when I'm looking for a thumbnail are me kind of going... And then that's not really what you want the calling card for your video to be. And so now he's done a flanker. It, it just seemed to... the original Alavo seemed to be... it's an EDC version of the original. Oh, I missed the rest of it. I don't see the point of this release except as a money grab, says Apple. Oh, so is is it just a less concentrated version? I thought it was... The thing with Kirk Xion, though, uh, I've been very, very fortunate enough to interview him a few times, although I haven't actually met him now for quite some time. Um, and and I'm hoping to be able to change that because he, he is really, really interesting and fascinating in interviews. Um, do check out some of the interviews with... Um, Happy to have bought you live. I'm not for sale, but you can catch me live if you like. <laughs> um, I know what you meant. Um, he uh, uh, do, do in the, on persilays.com. There is an interviews tab, and if you it's in alphabetical order, you can um, scroll through, and you will find all the interviews with him. Really, really interesting, and it's just so refreshing that. Um, he, he 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 says he says what he what he wants to say, but where I was going with that is that he gets quite annoyed when people um, insist on this idea that an, an eau de toilette, an eau de parfum, a an extra, you know, a pure perfume are just the exact same formula, but at, at different concentrations. And he was trying to use different analogies to explain what he meant, and I'm. I, I'm not sure he did actually find the right analogy in the end. Sorry, meant to say court. I, I know you did. It's fine. It's cool. But I might send you a price list <laughs> if, you, if you if you really you know. I'm not on the market right now, but you never know. One day. Um, anyway, where was I going? Um, he was he was trying to explain that um, 
you have to sort of obviously take the, the core of the perfume, you have to take what, what um, the, the perfume's main identity is or its central identity is. But in an eau toilette, you, you're, you're actually going for a different feel, you're going for a different effect. And so rather than just increasing or decreasing the concentration, you will actually maybe look at a different balance of the top notes in relation to the bass notes. Um, and it's, it's, he said, you know, he said it's not anything particularly to do with things being long lasting because there are plenty of eau de toilette out there that are extremely long lasting. So this is a very long winded way of, of saying um, that I would be surprised if, if it's literally just um, the, the first one watered down as it were. And also the thing about the, the original one, let me just pull this back a little bit so people can see it better, was that it was a real journey scent. You had to wait for it to develop. You you have to um, you have to wait to see where the where the different roses come from and when they emerge. Uh, I'm missing loads of comments here. Uh, Patrice Alexander says, "Greetings from Michigan, USA. Love you, Persilace. Thank you very much. That's a very nice comment to read." Aperol Spritz says, "No, the notes are not the same, but nothing inspiring about this one. That's a shame. We'll smell it in a second. I prefer the original, which is already a very safe rose." But beautifully done, you know, sometimes this thing of safe, I suppose it wasn't surprising, but it was so beautifully done. Uh, good evening, sir, from Greece, it says 365 Days Perfumes, good evening to you, <laughs> lots of emojis. Ashfaq says he liked Creed DB70, so who liked Creed? How dare you mention <laughs> Anyway, let's smell this, let's smell this. Um, so this is the, and I haven't done a bottle thumbnail because sometimes the bottle thumbnails work better. Smile, Persilase, you, you're in the company of friends. It's cool, you're gonna get a nice, if people wanna buy you, it's good. Uh, want to hear an opinion, Francis Cajon, Le Al Rose, or Frédéric Mal, Rose Queer. And that comes from, oh, now this is my Cyrillic alphabet. Is that Roman? Do I, do, am I reading that correctly? That must be Roman, right, in Russian. Uh, um, your surname, oh, I'm not going to try, no, I'm not going to try that one. I used to know the Cyrillic alphabet fairly well. Yep, okay, at least I got your first name, that's fine. Don't try it, I'll, I'll, have, to, I'll have to check it out, because when I study, I find, I find the Cyrillic alphabet so fascinating that I want to know what your surname is now. But Roman, thank you very much for tuning in. Uh, so, there we go, Lo à la Rose, um, okay, from Francis Cochin. Um Pink. Yeah, yeah, so who said pink? Uh, somebody said pink. Chang said pink, yeah. But that was a, was that a, was that a mm, pink or mm, pink? Okay. Ah, oh, wow, it's just, how can you not smile in the presence of a rose? I know what you mean about it reminding you of the first one, yes, because it, it's that Hola from a sunny Dominican vacation, says Anna. Hola back to you as well. And Joe's giving us a thumbs up. Uh, Rosie Queer for me, says Apro. Th there's not going to be a, a point of comparison between those two, is it? I mean, if you want the Frederick, how many languages do you speak or know Persilase? Not that many. Oh, what, because I could read Roman? I, I, I don't know that many. I wish I knew loads more. I mean, I would love to be able to l learn, you know, and speak lots and lots of languages. Were you impressed with my little Russian alphabet trick there? That was. No, the, I, the, I find the Cyrillic alphabet really fascinating because as I guess it's, you know, when, you, when you're when you used to the, the alphabet looking a certain way. And so when, for example, characters like what to us is a P, suddenly you have to, in your head, actually hear R when you, it, I, I just find those differences really, really fascinating. They just show how arbitrary an alphabet is. You know, somebody just sort of took a straight line and put a semicircle on it and said, from now on, when we see that in our brains, we're gonna go, uh, Ashfaq says Arabic, French, Polish, English, whatever. I don't really speak Arabic. I don't really speak Arabic. And I don't really speak French. And how has this turned into a video about my language skills? What you've left off there is Farsi. I have a little bit of an understanding of Farsi because I am half Iranian. But I, 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 I wish I could speak it much better. As a kid, when we were still living in Iran, I was actually able to, to communicate in spoken Farsi. And I've got to the point of actually being able to read it and, and write it. But I'd, it, it, it's, I, I don't, it, I don't have that knowledge um, accessible. They say that if you have l l known a language as a child, then it's in there somewhere, and you need uh, some kind of a key to help you unlock that knowledge. Usually, probably immersion in that language. Um, so maybe one day I'll unlock it. And 
if I'm watching like an Iranian movie, I will understand a lot of what's being said, but I, I miss nuances. Um, but enough about me. Um, anyway, so yes, you're right. It, 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 it is like a reminder of the original in the sense that it's a kind of jammy, citrusy, really exuberant, happy rose on on a musky base, you know, those musks that Claire Chiong loves and uses very, very well, you know, the musks from things like Aqua Universalis, uh, Apom, um, his Oud, uh, his, his um, you know, it, it, I've, I've always thought it's interesting that it, it, it's no surprise that his is a brand that did um, laundry products. Um, because of course musks lend themselves well to that kind of thing and he, he likes them, he likes musks. But you know what it's actually reminding me of as well quite strongly, which the original one didn't? It's the, from Aqua di Parma, what do they call those sort of high-end florals they have? Is it basically Rosa Nobile? I think it must be because they, um, it, it reminds me of that and it, it's uncomplicated so far. It's, it's, it's genuine, it's, it's sort of delightful, but I would agree that it, it, it's not especially exciting, you know, a, a very, very pleasant summary spritz. Let's let's look at the press release. Not terribly long. I missed a comment, uh, by the way, I saw. Oh, it came up there, but I haven't got it here now. This is so annoying. Oh, no, hang on. Yes, we have lots of Farsi words in Bengali language. Before the East India Company ruled here, Farsi was an official language. Absolutely. It, so it was. And speaking of the East India Company, we, we, we were gifted a copy of the new William Dalrymple book about the East India Company. What's it? I forget what it's called. Huge fat tome. Looking forward to reading that one day. So, brief press release on this. Rose is a rose is a rose is a rose, wrote Gertrude Stein in her poem Sacred Emily. Through his creation, master perfumer Francis Gorgian has put a modern spin on a theme sometimes seen as old-fashioned reference the video we started with today on the diptyque. L'eau à la rose gives a contemporary way of wearing a rose, seducing those who were initially reluctant. And you know what, fair enough, I can see this as being a scent that for people who go, oh I don't like rose, this might make them go, oh but this one's okay, <laughs> in that really annoying voice that people do when they say, I don't like jasmine, and you sort of point out to them that half of the perfumes in their collection are actually jasmine perfumes. Rapidly over the months, Ala Rose has become one of the iconic fragrances of Maison Francis Kirchian's olfactive wardrobe. Yes, it, it's, been, it's been a big hit for the brand. Inspired by the story of a painting of Queen Marie Antoinette holding a centifolia rose in her hand, signed Elizabeth Vigée Lebrun, her official portraitist, Francis Kirchian created in 2014. Has it really been that long? Whoa. A same name, Eau de Parfum à la Rose. I think maybe the translation people here needed to do a bit of work, never mind. In 2019, Kirchian has imagined a new emotion with the creation of the Eau Toilette variation. Like the caress of rose petals gathered at daybreak, L'eau à la Rose unfolds on, this, on the skin with a delicate floral freshness, a drop of perfumed water reflecting a bouquet of 400 freshly bloomed roses, if you say so, Francis. To compose L'eau à la Rose, a fruity floral or toilette, Francis Kirchian has chosen two sorts of roses from two origins, Damascena rose from Bulgaria, which also uses the Cyrillic alphabet, <laughs> offers its fruity note, slightly spicy and fruity pear and lychee for a blooming top note. On the base note, Centifolia rose absolute from grass gives its generous rosy floral note a petaled effect with slightly honeyed facet. Totally agree. This duo, composed of 400 powerful roses, has been magnified thanks to a green and airy freshness peony accord. Okay, yeah, agreed. Now, now that you say it, totally get that. And above all, a lychee top note adding fruity and tangy facets, but don't worry, not overly fruity. The white musks convey a sensual and light enveloping effect. Even though L'eau à la rose is in a toilette, Kirchian has given greater importance to rose in his formula, practically doubling its proportions. As a result, L'eau à la rose has a long-lasting sillage. You know, the, I would say it's impossible to dislike this. Yes, it doesn't reinvent the wheel. Yes, it's not, you know, maybe cause major ripples of excitement in the perfume world. But, but I can see that when I pass it under Madame Persilaise's nose, she's immediately going to go, 
Can I have that one? Hi from Cornwall, says Rachel. Thank you very much for tuning in. We're going to try and do one more video, Rachel, so stick around. You're not, you're not too late if you've only just tuned in. Um, it, it's, it, it, it's just a really, really delightful, uncomplicated sunny day. Do you find MFK perfumes overpriced for what they are, says Alicia or Alessia? That price thing. Uh, MFK equals safe, says Ashfaq, but not all the time, not all the time. I mean, I think he is trying to do, he is trying to do quality commercial, which is fine as an endeavor, I think. Uh, he, in one of the interviews, do try to check them out. And I think this one may be an interview that actually appeared on Now Smell This, but I link to all of them on my blog. In one of his interviews, he said very, very frankly that his work actually supports a certain number of families, by which he meant that each of his employees represents a family and each of his perfumes represents the livelihood of, of those employees and, and, and by extension of those families. And, and he was basically trying to say that he cannot allow himself to be completely out there uh, and create something that actually nobody is going to buy. Um, and you know, you sort of have to get that. In 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 my other life, I I I I try to, or I shouldn't say try. I do write fiction, and one of the things that I was always told is, you know, if if you want to write something purely for yourself, uh, to 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 indulge your need to write or your compulsion to write, then don't worry about what it is. Just write. Whereas if you want to write something. Uh, with a view to getting it published, then you need to understand that what you write is going to be competing for eyeballs. Because when a person walks into a bookshop or when they go on, you know, on, a, on, an, on an online shop, they're going to be presented with, you know, a vast number of options. And what is it about yours that is going to actually make them say, yes, I will spend £8.99 or £9.99 on this. And I think Kirkshion takes a very, very pragmatic attitude towards his work, which is okay. That, that he that he doesn't, as far as I've smelled, he doesn't do anything that is a real sellout. And that's very, very different from something that's safe. Uh, Law, hang on, I need to pick up the tablet. Aperol Spritz says, Law was made for the Asian clientele, hence the cheerful citrus, non-aggressive nature, airy quality. And that and that's also fine. Sounds like Grand Soir, says Nick. It doesn't reinvent the wheel, but is a very well-made amber, yeah? I like his Absolute Pour Le Soir, though, says Ashfaq. I love, I mean, as you know, I love, love, love Absolute Pour Le Soir. Nick says, Ashfaq, I totally agree. Much more complex and interesting. Yes, and, and I think, actually, he mentions Absolute Pour Le Soir in that interview because he said that, much as he loves it, it, it actually didn't sell very much. And I think his Paris boutique is the only place where you can buy it now because he couldn't justify um, continuing to make it in large batches. And, and I guess that's... That's that. The, the, I'll pay if, if something is well made, says Angeline. I don't understand why I should pay for a cheap eau de cologne simply because it, 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 it. Oh, I haven't got, haven't, I haven't got the rest of your comment. It is an EDC. Yeah, fair enough. And these are all personal choices. You know that that crossover. Hello from Poland, says Kamil. Hi, cześć, dzień dobry. Or no, it is still dzień dobry, isn't it? Um, that that crossover between something being able to reach a wider audience, but also not selling out. That, that's that's an interesting area and, and quite a tough area, I think, to work in. You could almost say that it's sort of easier to be out there, but uh, a, a discussion for another time. So the time being what it is, I think we are able to do another video. What do people think? Are you going to stick around for another video? There will be a blotter update of this one. Um, for the moment, thank you for tuning in. YouTube, as you know, needs about five minutes to kind of do its thing so that we can do the next video. But let, let's go for it. Let's do let's do episode 66 of Love at First Send in a few minutes. Uh, it'll be an interesting one uh, because it's probably something that a lot of you haven't had a chance to smell yet, even though it's been around for a while. So I hope that is a sufficient tease. So see you in a bit. But I'm, oh, hang on. Last comment. Uh, Low is labeled as an EDP, but I get the vibe of an EDC, says Aperol Spritz. Um, no, it's an EDT, you mean. Uh, yeah, it's an old toilet. That, um, fair enough, fair enough. But anyway, see you in a bit. Take care, bye.